what is going on YouTube? It is I, Comrade Jackson. And once again, I have come to teach you of the wonders of communism and the shortcomings of the capitalism you dirty imperialistic westerners seem to love. Yeah, yeah, you get the joke. You know, some of the stuff that Twitter commies get themselves up in arms about really scratches my head. Like, they'll say that they want what's best for the common worker, and then they'll go and militarize against something that, for the most part, doesn't really matter. Like, taking this instance, video games. We have this Twitter post from, I don't know, some woman. It boggles my mind how we lost gamers to the right. Capitalism is the biggest cause of the decline of gaming. I'm guessing they mean, you know, gaming as in quality wise, because I don't think gaming has quote unquote declined, considering it's, you know, the biggest industry in these United States right now. If you're seriously gonna write a mini essay about how capitalism ruined gaming, I feel like at that point it's time to go outside, shut off the computer, get some fresh air, take a walk or something, get a job, because clearly you don't have one. I cannot think of a bigger waste of time than writing a goddamn essay about how capitalism ruin video games. Microtransactions, gambling addiction, loop rates, pay to win, selling games in piecemeal snippets, charging full price for flawed garbage that'll get fixed later, relying on the community to fix their stuff for free, looking at modders and Bethesda, monopolistic growth, removing competition, and thus reducing quality and innovation, etc. Like gaming is a microcosm of the absolute failures of capitalism. Everything wrong with capitalism shows up in the gaming world. Well I don't think that's necessarily a problem with capitalism. I think it's more so a problem with the customer base, not, you know, the customers themselves, but, you know, just kind of how the customer base works, right? Because here's how it goes, right? Say you've got this niche little activity people like, could be gaming, could be other things too, and you've got companies in this niche who make products for the people who take part in it. Over time, the products get better, and the customer gradually begins to form their expectations of the quality of the products in their activity. At this point, the market is so small that if you as a company want to survive, you have to cater to your customer's expectations expectations. You can't cut corners and you have to continually improve your product to compete with other companies in the business. Eventually more people come into the hobby, it becomes mainstream, so now the hobby is filled with people who don't have their expectations set. They don't understand the quality that they ought to expect from the companies that provide for them. The companies, they see this, they notice it, and you know what they do? They cut corners. Their products get noticeably worse because they know they can get away with it. They stop marketing towards the people who started the hobby because those guys mean less money. Instead, they market to the larger demographic because they know they can get away with selling them an inferior product. So what's the solution here? Socialism? Alright, fine. Now socialism, I guess that's when we do away with CEOs and shareholders and the quote-unquote means of production are owned by the people. So presumably the employees of the company. Oh slick, that ain't actually socialism. Dude, there's like a hundred different interpretations of this crap. Do you expect me to care? But you know, fine. All video game companies are now owned by their employees. They call all the shots. If so, what's stopping them from doing the same exact thing? What's stopping them from putting in the same loot boxes and microtransactions? And don't say it won't happen. I mean, after all, greed is a natural part of being a human, near as I'm concerned. Oh, we'll enforce regulations. Right, right, I'm sure there will be no loopholes whatsoever, and I'm sure we can trust the old GovT to do their job enforcing regulations. Yes, definitely. All this to say, look, it ain't gonna work. Alright, capitalism has its flaws, no one's arguing that, but let's not pretend that the video game industry would magically get better as soon as we overthrow our oppressors and the will of the people or whatever you guys say prevails. I suppose what I'm trying to get at here is get a goddamn job already, a real one. You're smart enough to get yourself into college debt, you're smart enough to bust your ass just like me. And all gamers think is, look how feminism and diversity is ruining my video games, what? No, I don't think there's a single gamer who hasn't complained about the bad business practices in the industry. Again, loot boxes, microtransactions, what have you. These are things that we have both endlessly criticized and scrutinized. People like Jim Sterling, unhinged as that person may be, upper echelon gamers, and a lot more stand as living proof of that. And besides, we can literally criticize both aspects of the industry. We can dislike how the industry is removing conventionally attractive video game characters, and we can complain about, again, predatory industry practices. It's not one thing or the other here. The two have pretty much no correlation. I'm going crazy here. And I mean, come on. Lacking attractive characters in video games, that is not a quote-unquote right-winged thing. If you like hot girls, that doesn't make you a Trump-loving conservative. What do you want about losing gamers to the right? I guess liking hot girls is political now. 
Call me an extremist in that department, Dan. <laughs> hey. I really envy the time this person must have had to write this junk. Really, I do. But alas, I actually gotta work for a living. You know, to pay for your welfare check. You're welcome. Who made this tweet? Oh god, they have a GoFundMe to prop up their failing comic book business. Why am I not surprised? As expected, the comments are in absolute war zone. I did find this pretty interesting video. I guess we'll give it a watch. Adding on to it, I never got how gamers, the group of social outcasts that never used to really fit with the mainstream and got made fun of, didn't ally with other outside groups. Ally with other groups? What, is there some sort of war on? What are you on about? You're a loony. That's what it is. You gotta go to the funny farm. Because this basically. The problem with subcultures like this, which are driven primarily by toxic masculinity. Oh, he said it. Toxic masculinity. Give me a break. You want to know how to make people instantly take you less seriously? Buzzwords. As soon as you say something like, I don't know, heteronormativity. People say that, right? Privilege. I instantly do not care about what you have to say. ...is that they need to sustain a narrative. It's a narrative that's been building for decades that says nerds are outcasts and social pariahs who have been ostracized from society simply because of the things that they enjoy. They are victims, but in the face of that adversity, they've been able to claim a little world for themselves where they can play video games and Dungeons and Dragons in peace. Is there anything untrue about that, though? Because, I mean, yeah, that, that seems quite about right. I mean, I mean, you're not exactly debunking anything here. All this seems spot on. The problem is they have to gatekeep it super intensely because if they let someone in who doesn't fit their classic victim narrative, let's say an attractive woman or a classically handsome jock, someone who's not supposed to like their nerd stuff, well, then they may have to confront the idea that it isn't that they are disliked because they are nerds. It is that they are disliked because they are profoundly disgusting and unpleasant people. Okay, so uh, this is a pretty weird take. What he basically said is, you're not outcasts, you're not victims of bullying, you're just a disgusting group of people. Uh, I feel like you're not exactly proving them wrong here, dude. I don't care about, I guess they call it gatekeeping, I don't care about that. I don't have the time to. But honestly, after watching this video, I can kind of see why it's such a prevalent concern. I wouldn't want people like these in my hobby, no siree. Like Jesus, I would not want to have to hang out with this guy. So I don't know, I want more watch time. This clip from G4 TV has been making its rounds. Who are these people again? No, really, I want to know. I've never heard of these people before. These guys are literal nobodies. This coming from a literal nobody. I don't know, I guess someone went on a rant about sexism or something like that. L let's take a look. Sexism in gaming. And joining G4... <laughs> All right, we got that awkward scattered applause. Let's see what the dame has to say. In this is not where I thought we were going, I know, but I'm here. I have no here. idea. I'm listening. Yeah. In joining G4, I was ecstatic to be part of something that I grew up watching as a child. But every time G4 is brought up in various channels, even in this YouTube channel, we have the chat in front of us, I can see you, without a doubt, there will be backlash because I'm not as bangable as the previous host. Whoop. It's somehow- Talk to him, Frost! It has somehow been expected that you can talk about how much you jerked off to women as a compliment. That's it's weird. not a compliment. It's weird! It's dehumanizing, and it's weird. First day on the internet? Like, no, really, am I supposed to feel bad for you? Like, come on. No, I feel like by going on this, I don't even know what to call it, meth-induced rant, I suppose. You're just kind of encouraging more people to do it. I mean, I wasn't even thinking of you or your body, or really your show, but that's irrelevant. I wasn't even thinking about how quote-unquote bangable you were until you brought it up. My advice, if you want respect on the internet, you gotta earn it, man. People are gonna be assholes one way or another. All you can really do is build up your rep. Otherwise, you'll keep being the laughingstock that you are. Welcome to being a public figure. And how many people are actually saying this? Like, legitimately. Seriously, the only people saying that sort of weird stuff is probably trolls looking for a reaction. And ultimately, you're kind of giving them what they want. But whatever. Girl power and all that stuff, I guess. Women do not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Morgan Webb, Olivia Munn did not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. I mean, you're kind of lying to yourself if you think that. I mean, at the end of the day, men like to look at women, so it's only natural that n every now and then there's an attractive woman on screen. You see it all the time with booth babes and those girls you see on WWE. Sex sales, man. Not all are put in that, you know, kind of position, but, you know, certainly some. You're lying to yourself, you know, if you're saying that some women weren't made for the express intent to be a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> 
Hey, she cooking, y'all. Jesus, these guys must feel so uncomfortable right now. The way these guys egg her on, dude, it's so weird. And what, she cooking, y'all? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if she cooked meth before the show. Freaking loony. <laughs> And that's just obvious sexism. You don't need to explicitly objectify women or declare that you hate women to be sexist. Just go ahead and check out Thorne's latest meltdown on Twitter for some spark notes. Now, here at X-Play, our reviews are written and produced by a team of people. I'm sorry, I, I don't know. I really don't care about any of this. I really don't care about anything this woman's saying. Do they do drug tests at G4 TV? I'm assuming not. Oh, I guess they'll say I'm a sexist now. Hey, I, I ain't calling her a crackhead because she's a woman. I'm saying she's a crackhead because she's acting like a crackhead. I'm judging her on the quality of her character. Ain't that what she want? To be judged based on the merit of, you know, her personality and, you know, not her gender? I'm literally giving her what she wants. So maybe for 2022, we'd be a bit nicer, a bit more self-reflective, and we enjoy the fact that people are working hard to make free content for you. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Don't like it, don't watch. That's probably the worst thing you can say to your audience, because even if they, like, don't disagree with you, they feel as if they're being talked down to. They're feeling as if you're disrespecting them. So you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna stop watching you. Good job alienating your own fans. It's an interesting strategy, I guess. Let's see how it plays out. How many views do these guys get? Jesus. Jesus, these guys gotta be bleeding money, dude. Like, these guys have an entire set, they got employees. Most of these videos don't even have 100,000 views. How much money do you get on a video? It's like one dollar for every thousand view, right? Yikes, man. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think these guys are making that much money. Well, not much to say about that, or really anything. That's really all I've got for this shtick. Now, nah, do old Jackie a favor and keep it groovy. Thank you. Thank you very much.